Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Stallions Run. Week two is in the books. We got a lot to talk about. The Stallions home opener is upcoming this Saturday. Scout, you're here as always. Uh, I know we were excited. We were talking a lot before the show. We have a, a bunch to discuss for this episode. Yeah, um, and first thing, we're in a new office kind of thing, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, I uh, I had made a new little setup, new little overlay. That's why there's this uh, this cloud behind us. Um, but yeah, so we have Stallions right up top, Scout, Buck, or Buck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then um, in the bottom yeah. right corner, it's the UFM logo, and then um, Southern Charm Sports, which is obviously my brand. Um, but yeah, but it's really cool. What well, we also have some new stuff that we're going to be showing you throughout the thing, but yeah, but, uh, mm-hmm. going in on, uh, the week two game, uh, Panthers versus Stallions, but what was your like first half thoughts? Um, I mean, I, I posted them to Twitter as soon as like the first half was done. That's something I'm going to try to get better at, uh, throughout the season. But my first thoughts, you know, for the first half, at least, um, it almost reminded me of week one with the renegades but at the same time it felt like there was some of the kind of attitude of the second half with the renegades so i was like okay i hope this doesn't become a weekly thing but it feels like the offense is settling and i was just going through like okay guys we, we've kind of already been through this cycle let's kind of move on defense i feel like they were didn't only say that was for the offense uh defense it feels like they were set from the beginning uh and, and if you ask me I felt like an improvement over week one, so that was something I was happy about. Uh, we'll get into that later, but the, the, the defense was on fire, uh, at least for the first half. I do have some complaints about the second half, but what do you think about the uh, first half when it came to uh, Styles versus Panthers? Yeah, so um, there was a lot to talk about. I think we started really hot, um, I will say. Um, we started really solid. Um, it was a, a constant, we got a pick. I'm getting the order wrong. Definitely. But we got a pick, we got a fumble. I think we, and we got a few, uh, like three and outs really early. Um, but we could not yeah. finish. We can, we could not get a touchdown. Um, I believe, so we went up nine Oh, and then I believe that's when they got the touchdown. Um, but yeah. yeah, it was, it was a struggle early on to just like get it in the end zone. Um, but yeah, but I really liked it um, overall in the first half. Great defense. Just need to figure out how to get the ball in the end zone. Uh, J- uh, well, this will be a Jace Peterson didn't get a target the whole game, but I'll talk more about that later. Um, or catch the whole game. Um, but yeah. Jake Bates, 62 yarder, back to back weeks with a 60 yard field goal, consecutively making 60 yard kicks for the the second time in pro football history. Um, it happened one time mm-hmm. in the NFL. I believe we can still claim being a pro football league. Um, but yeah, but um, very cool. And uh, how about the second half, Buck? Um, <sighs> offense, it, it felt like things were starting to like finally, like, you know, but not, not only use click because uh, again, it felt like everything, everyone knew what they were, knew what they were doing. It was just, okay, we have to wind, just wear down this, uh, Michigan defense and just okay, let's get things going. Let's get things going. Clear clear that out. Okay, we'll be all set. Um, defense though, wise for the Stallions. To be perfectly honest, I think I, I think they were on the field way too long. Uh, they they didn't. It feels like they never got true rest. Like you not know, just like okay, you got two minutes. You know, it felt like you needed. They needed like ten minutes to kind of okay, pump the brakes. Let's just get some water. Let's get some. Fresh, fresh, fresh oxygen, and just keep things going that way. And I feel like that that's something that needs to be addressed. Just having those longer drives where you can like rest players, because I mean the defense was out there, you know, constantly, you know, having, you know, stalling the Panthers' offense as much as they often could. But you you have to reach a point where you're telling your offense, hey, look, you guys, you guys can't just have three to five plays. We need to have, you know, some 10-plus play drives so these guys can go out there and make sure they don't score and put less pressure on you. So mm-hmm. that was kind of my thing. Otherwise, um, I, I mean, I think we said last week this was going to be a tough game. We Everyone really undervalued Michigan. And I think I think I said – I think we both had pretty accurate kind of predictions about 
it being close to a one score game are being a one score game. So, I mean, I look, uh, I, we all kind of said it was going to be gritty football. We got gritty football. Uh, now I think the, the question is how do you bounce back from that gritty football? That, that's my big concern right now. Um, yeah, so there's a few different things. I think the defense, you need no change. Um, I wasn't necessarily very confident in the Panthers' offense against our defense, but defense-wise, I think everything was great. We know DeMarcus Gates came back. Um, honestly, honestly, um, one of the biggest things on defense was, like, our sacks. And Carlos Davis, mm-hmm. he had two sacks. Taco Charlton, he had three sacks, including the game-winning sack. Um, it was just, it, it was crazy. Um, we were getting constant pressure. Uh, I think there was four or five throwaways that we forced, um, probably a good amount of, you know, just hurries in general, but yeah, but it was a great game on that end. Uh, just constant pressure. Great job by, uh, coach Chavis and everybody on the defense. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and then with that, adding DeMarcus Gates, a, a true cover linebacker, or at least a better cover linebacker then I would say then to Zeno or Scooby. Uh, then you get, so every player on the, every one of your linebackers, now they can, they can play their role, right? You have Gates in the middle, Gates is a cover and the tight end or the, the receiver. That's like, that. that's his man. And then Scooby is in the flat, to Zeno's in the flat and they can cover the, the run coming out. So, um, but the offense, it needs work. It, it, it needs, there, there's something with the offense that needs work. I think the biggest thing, honestly, um, is the quarterbacks. I'll get, I'll get you to speak on this, but um, when you have, so we have Adrian Martinez, he had 153 total yards, and then Matt Corral had 81 yards and an interception. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, that's total yards. Adrian's came more through the run game, whereas Matt's came more through the pass, and Matt was the one getting the most reps anyway. Um. But I, I think <clears throat> I will say one thing to this. Um, I think Adrian going down and not being able to really play in week one um, was a, a factor in him getting more chances in week two. Um, and, and the reason that we still have a quarterback battle going into week three, really. Um, but yeah, but it was just and I'll get your opinion um, on the sack guys and on the uh, uh quarterbacks but for me I, I just need to see some clarity i'm not exactly sure if who's our one but i think we do need a one eventually uh i think it it works at times um the generals did it a while um the renegades are doing it right now but i'm not those teams are getting in the end zone or got in the end zone and we're not getting in the end zone so yeah i mean you kind of took words out of my mouth uh we need to find a qb one uh, you, you, the, I, like I said on Twitter, I you know my post game thoughts. Look, the Q, two QB system is cool. Like it, you know, I'm someone who wanted when you know I, I'm an Alabama guy when you had Hertz and uh, Tonga Vailoa showing up at the same time. You know, for that one year, it was like okay, maybe run a system that you know you work with both for their strengths um, instead of you know having just Hertz and the odds of backup. It's, I still think that could have worked. That's my opinion, Nick Saban. You know. You know what? He might have. He may have more information than I do, but it, I think you're kind of right now. It's kind of showing though the weakness of a two QB system. You're basically yeah. all right. You're you're starting to kind of have have a little bit of weakness. Let's put in Adrian. Uh, or you know, Adrian's starting to look kind of a little weak. All right, Matt, you're going in. Um, when I say weak, I mean just like you know, in, in terms of all right, let's let, let these guys get a little rest, but. I, I think you got to decide is it Adrian or is it Matt? I mean, there's some people who want it to be Jamar, which I can't blame them. Yeah. I mean, when you look at some of the flaws, some are definitely chemistry flaws where it's just like they don't, they, you know, they haven't played as much with this guy. Now, to be fair, for, for, for the case of Jamar, there, there's absolutely some cases like, you know, Jay Steinberg, where you're, you're kind of like, hey, uh, you know, Jamar played what? quarters with him and then that was the whole Alex Magoo thing uh, but the, but there are some players Jamar has some experience with so I, I honestly if, I, if I'm Coach Holtz now this is me being the armchair co- uh, coach so you know just say fair enough uh, I honestly you honestly make, have to wonder Adrian his passing is not the greatest we, we saw that on display this weekend um, 
even though he didn't get the interception, I think Matt Corral is the better passer. You have to wonder, do you maybe bring Jamar in as QB2 this week, especially for it being a home opener, and you say, okay, Adrian, watch what Jamar does if he's in. Uh, because Jamar is someone, again, has that veteran experience. He knows what Colts wants. He knows how the whole system works. I mean, this is what, his seventh year under it? So you're kind of like, okay, maybe – Maybe we we kind of bring you know we don't put make him QB one, but we we bring, make uh, you know our available you know right from the get go. We don't have to worry about potential quarterback going down, so he's used in the system. That's just my opinion. Um, I you know I could easily be swayed, uh, but look, Matt and Adrian they both had excellent performances. Also, it's just right now we need consistency. That's the issue. Is that I think that's the word consistency. And we're not getting that from the offense right now. We should not have had as many three and outs or like, you know, dry, you know, like basically like half a drive. Uh, uh, and God, the red zone woes, especially in the second half. We went to the red zone like what, five times? And we only got a touchdown twice. You know, it's just like, you, you, you can't do that. So right now, I think the big concern is find QB1, stick with them and get them used, get, get everyone used to that being your quarterback and not, okay, is Adrian going to be coming in this, this you know, drive? Yeah, and um, my last bit on it before we move on, um, I, I do think both both of them are good, but it's like, to your point of Tua and, and Jalen, they never were, were subbing in, in and out. Um, I know, like, yeah. like I think it was, I think the first most notable one I'm forgetting, and um, my my family that is Florida fans will will find this hilarious. But one of the Steve Spurrier teams had a two quarterback system, and um, they were they weren't terrible, but they just weren't like they weren't great. Um, and it was just it, 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 you can make it work, but I, having two good quarterbacks is great as long as you don't play both of them at the same time. And I, I said this on. Um, Luke had a little. Uh, Luke Miller had a little um, post game space thing, and I was like, "We're letting one guy get hot, and we're immediately pulling him for some reason." And I'm like, "If because Adrian ran for 30 yards, he threw or he, I think he threw a five yard out, and they pulled him." And I'm like, second and five from the 20, and we're pulling him." I could be totally wrong on, on the down distance there, but it was like it just felt like w- w- he was finally getting in a groove. He was being a threat, and then they pull him, and then. Mm-hmm. You get a field goal again. Um, it it was just so weird to me. But yeah, yeah. But um, that was my final thing. I also did want to say I do think we underutilized our tight ends. I know we got a two point out of Marcus Ball. Um, but we have yeah. Where's Chase Steinberger? Yeah. Where is um, Chase Steinberger? Probably the greatest tight end in the UFO right now. And just. Yeah, um, Phil Montgomery, please help my boy. Um, I drafted him in, in fantasy football, and it ain't, it ain't looking great. You're using CJ plenty, but get get Jay some numbers, yeah. anyways. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and to that point, um, and we should have made a graphic about it too. Ricky and and CJ, it's great to have two running backs because I felt like last year when we had Zaquandre and we had CJ and we had Bo. We had very good running backs, but like they weren't great yet. And then it, it took Bo going down for CJ and Z to get really going. And then after yeah. that, we brought in Ricky Person, and, and then he started getting more numbers. I feel like now we have a, a fully developed CJ Marable, shout out to Coastal Carolina, and then Ricky Person Jr. Um, and I think with that, they're going to take a, we're, we're going to ride, be able to ride them further than we're going to ride our quarterbacks. Um, just because of how this team set up. We have great blocking tight ends. We have a solid amount of running backs that can also block. CJ's laid an insane amount of blocks. I think that's a very underrated thing. <clears throat> RIP Bobby Holly, I love you, buddy. But um, but CJ has been excellent in being a, a blocking back. Um, but but yeah. But um let's continue. Yeah. We do have an opponent this week, um, the home opener against the Memphis Showboats. And uh, we got two of them down there. I hate the inverted screen, but we got two of them down there. Um, we got Case Cookis and Darius Victor. These are familiar faces, um, but tell us a little bit about them. 
Yeah, so I mean, of course, Case uh, was, of course, quarterback for the Philly Stars, especially in that championship game in 2022. Basically went down kind of right at the final drive. Um, what could have potentially won Philly that game uh, ended up, you know, the backup came in, Scooby gets the interception, brings it all the way. I don't think it was a pick six, but I think it was pretty close enough to it. And that sealed the deal for Birmingham. Darius Victor, probably one of the greatest running backs in the league at the moment. Uh, someone that should not be messed with. Uh, if you if you like to think of Derrick Henry, especially me, as myself as a Titans fan, uh, RP Derrick as a Titan, but uh, think of, and I say this with no offense, let me, let me say this. Think of Der- Derrick Henry, but if he was about, um, let's see, Derrick Henry is about 6'2", think of him about seven inches shorter, uh, but you still got someone with that strength and you have someone with that ability to move you out of the way. So mm. just, 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 just think about that. Scout, would yeah. you would you be scared for your life if if Darius Victor was heading your way with a ball in hand? Hey, he's already registered me on Twitter. Um, I would <laughs> run away. But uh, uh, but yeah, okay. but it, it's it's one of those things. Uh, he's a bowling ball, and I think bowling balls are going to be even more. Uh, uh, I don't know if profitable is the right word, but they're going to produce more, especially if the hip drop tackle moves down into the lower leagues and to college ball and all that. Um, because it, it's a, it's a lot of force. It's a lot of force moving at you. Um, uh, I believe Maurice Jones drew is his, is, uh, is his comp every single time. Um, and I believe it like he runs, he, he runs hard, he runs low, he runs steady and he, he'll be, he'll be definitely like, like the guy to look out for. I'm, I'm honestly more scared for of Darius than I am of case. Darius has played us. He was with the generals beforehand. He played us plenty of times. Um, he's a great player. Um, this will be, I believe this is both of their third time. No, this would be Casey's uh, no, this fourth. Would be, this would be third. But yeah, fourth coming up. Darius is third. Yes. Darius is third. Casey's fourth time playing with signs. They have plenty of experience playing us. We've had a very similar system the whole time. So this is not <clears throat> for us, for us, this is a new combo. For them, they know the things. They might, they might know something else. So we'll, we'll have to keep a lookout for it. But I will say the one thing about Case, it, it, he always breaks off a run. The, he, he looks like he can't run. He looks like he's Tom Brady half the time. But then he just like breaks yeah. a fifty or sixty yard run. Um, and I think he'll do it against us again. He, he's done it basically every time he's played us. Uh, <laughs> but. But yeah, but I, like I hope he doesn't. But I'm just saying, like you know, it's a tradition at this point. Um, but yeah, but these are the two guys to look out for. Um, obviously they have some def- mm. defensive guys that are also a hell of a lot or hell of players. They got some great center fielders at safety. Um, their DBs are probably some of the best in the league. However, hold on, um, hold on. There's one thing I want to talk about when it comes to Memphis. Their offensive line, that is their Achilles heel. I mean. If you watch the past two games, uh, Memphis had Case running around the field looking for any opportunities to throw that ball away. That says something that should be noted. Because if you watch this past game with the Michigan Panthers, who, in my opinion, have a bit of a better offensive line, the Birmingham front four on defense was tearing them apart as much as they could. Now, now, I'm not saying that there couldn't be adjustments that couldn't be done between now and game day to that offensive line. But if you look at what happened with Michigan's offensive line and then look at what I think is a weaker Memphis offensive line, that could absolutely be a problem for Case Cookus. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean... Oh. I mean, you, we both saw it. That like they, that it was like almost like a steak, you know, a hot knife going through hot butter. Yeah. Um. So, <clears throat> and I will say one thing too, because Scooby, uh, right at the end of the game, I didn't necessarily believe in it. And if you're wondering, both me and Buck have like a little sniffle or whatever from Arlington. They're trying to take a sound, yes. anyways. But, uh, uh, <laughs> but. So at the end of the game, Scooby was coming on. Um, 
EJ Perry. And EJ Perry took a very late dive. I hate that this is a trend. This is basically a trend at this point for all these USFL quarterbacks. He took a late dive and he got he gets hit right in like the upper shoulder head area. And it's a flag. And you know, by the book it's a flag, but hey, quarterback should go down earlier. And I I'm a defense first guy. Like um, but Case had a very similar play. Uh, that honestly, I, I didn't even know why it was a foul because he hit him straight chest level, but he was, he was out for, I think two or three minutes probably, or not like out, like concussed, but he, he was, he did not re-enter the game for at least two or three game minutes. Um, but yeah, but, uh, basically case, please slide you're a hell of a ball player. I don't want you to get hurt. Um, but that would be something that you have to be aware of. You don't want to give out. 15 yard penalty because the guys run at you and then he okay. he dives and you hit him late um but yeah um but overall i think this is a, a very good matchup for us I, I think we we match up with the show books very well um they do have great dbs i i think if you were if you watched the game last week and you were like hey um like if you're like hey we don't have, there's no long ball. We're not going to get a long ball. Or if we do, it'll be off of something, you know, the the, the book of Skip Holtz. Um, we're going to run a play action pass and hit a crosser route, or, or we're going to hit some random deep post on third and 11. Um, but yeah, uh, probably run it down their throat all game and then hope that we can contain their run game, contain their improv, and then who win the game. Um, but yeah, but uh, my score prediction for this game, it um would probably be somewhere. It, it'll be a higher scoring game than last week. Um, uh, I would like to say like thirty-two to twenty. Mm. That'll be my score prediction. Um, but so if we were on points. ESPN, so so if you were on ESPN, you would say we're hitting that over, baby. Yes, if I if I was Tom Luganville, um. I would be saying that we are we are hitting the over. Over under, over under, over under. But what about um, that if, Birmingham money line? <laughs> I, and I, I will I will say I will say that the the there's a reason they're doing it. They have ESPN bet now. They have all these other sports books. Um, it does not make sense necessarily to the Alabama because in the state it is, uh, we do not have gaming yet. Um, hey, as a but, as a true Alabamian, I understand God hates sports gambling. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but we, we don't have gaming yet. Obviously that, that bill is currently being cycled through. Um, but there there are other states that do have gaming. We do have ESPN but I think is in like eleven states now. So they're talking to a wider audience than just those of us that are in states that don't have and and talking yeah. about states, Tennessee has sports gambling. Um, so like, like we'll probably hear it even more in the showboats game because I heard it most in the last week, San Antonio, Memphis, which is one of the only matchups. Obviously we have three Texas teams, but other than the Texas teams and Memphis, every other matchup, you have like one team that's out of a, of a zone of gambling. Um, so unless it's like yeah. the Texas teams are playing each other or the, the Texas and Memphis teams are playing each other, um, uh, you get really weird. I believe St. Louis also don't quote don't me. I'm not, has, not a legal expert. No, hey, I, I don't think Texas has sports gambling. Yes, but there's certain sponsors. Like we were in Chalk. Oh, Stadium. I see. Uh, yeah, there you yeah, go. Anyways, yeah. um, but yeah, but uh, but yeah. So there are a ton of events this week. Just had to say. Oh, hold on, hold on. My, um, my score prediction, oh, real quick, because I oh, went off my fault. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say this is actually a bit of a lower scoring game, but not like last like uh, last game lower scoring. I'm going 25. No, I'm make it actually 27. 27 18. 27 18. Oh, I'm so, going with that. So we're still hitting the over if it if it looks like okay. The... They haven't come out yet, but it was like every game was between forty and forty. I, I think, I, I, yeah, it was like forty point one or forty point five. Uh, and only I'm gonna, one hit. I'm gonna say it's probably. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm probably gonna keep the forties, uh, unless maybe for um, St. Louis they might put the overs on that a little higher. Um, oh, you check yeah. it now. Uh, I was, I was, I don't think no, no, no. They have. They, the, they the should wait till like Wednesday yet. to drop them. 
Yeah. Yeah, they drop you record on, on Monday. So if you're if you're interested, yep. if you live in a site where you can do it legally, um, then look it up. But uh, all on right. Monday they do well, speaking have, of like, those events, yeah. uh, so we do have an interesting event coming up. I don't. I think I'm not going to be able to make this one. Uh, but the Stallions are going to be publicly showing off their rings this Friday at Ghost Train Brewery. Uh, fr- like you see on the screen, 5 to 6 p.m. Uh, looks like everyone's going to be there, including players yeah. from the 2022 team, of course. It's 2023 team. 2023 team. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so that looks like that's going to be a fun little event uh, that is going to be taking place the day before the game. And uh, then we have the game itself. That's going to be... 6 p.m. at Protective home opener, last home opener of the league. I might add, I'm a little, I'm still a little salty about that. Uh, but yeah. Birmingham, the team's coming back home. Uh, so where can we find tickets, Scout? Yeah, um, of all the cute little graphics I made, I did not find one for the showboats. I'll just put the showboats back on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but I'll I'll put a link down below. Um, but, but depending on what day it is, it'll be a it might change. Um, we're currently working on putting it under one link, but it could be a link that answers a code. If it is a link with a code, the code's uh, CHARM. It can be all capital, all lowercase, whatever you want. Um, but yeah, but and then just one thing sounding off. I know that we have A-Day. We have A-Day happening at, a, I believe, 3 o'clock. It should That's not happen for yeah, more, than, more than two hours. Like You uh, can a- easily a- go to A-Day and then go to the Stallions game. Don't. Don't make up an excuse. You can easily go to both. What, what Trust me, the A-Day game is probably going to be maybe an hour 45. So. And and this man knows A-Day, that A-Day at least, because apparently Alabama and Auburn, they both need the A-Day. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but... I will say I have, I have run away from every single A-Day, so... I, I always do touch but... this on A-Day. <laughs> But Showboats, um, great team, great rivalry. We beat them 42-2 to last time, but hey, it's a great rivalry. Um, just because we kick there, um, you know, every single time. Um, <laughs> okay. But yeah, but I, I'll really like this game. Obviously, um, me and Diva have had our banter on Twitter before. I've never met him in person because that happened the week after the Generals played us last year. Um, but yeah, but it, it's going to be a great game. I, I really think so. I think every so every single game last week was a one score game. In week one, the only one to not be one score was the San Antonio game. Don't quote me on that. I'm just pretty yeah. sure. Um, but uh, I think we'll, we're gonna we're gonna experience that the whole week or the whole year really. Now by the end of the year, there mm-hmm. might be some teams that you know they have two wins going in week seven or something, two wins going in week eight, and then they're like, yeah, you know, we we might see some some pullaways then. But I think we'll also see, you know, the, the adverse reaction. We'll see um, teams be like, "Hey, uh, we're really gonna gonna ball out this week. We we haven't played a lot, or we haven't played very well." And especially in um, the Renegades are better than an 0 two team. I'll go ahead and say that. But of 0 two teams, the Renegades have a third quarterback, Fulton Allers, and they also have Lindsey Scott Jr. And they could have a a hey. We're out of the playoff hunt, but hey, we have these young quarterbacks that we want to shine. So they'll, they'll have two games left, and they'll be like, hey, we're going to give Holton this game, we're going to give Lindsey Scott the, the rest of the next game. And to me, that that would be beautiful. Because even if, you know, it's a competitive league, they're trying to compete, but if, if all else fails and you give a man an opportunity to earn his bag, to earn a, a spot in the NFL, I truly think that that would be like, that's the purpose of this league. But yeah, but um, but do you have any ending thoughts on this week uh, on home opener and everything? Uh, well, uh, mainly I I'm just excited to finally be back in protective. It's been over a year, so well, I mean, last time I wasn't there wasn't June, but still, uh, you know, uh, glad to be back in protective. Hopefully, I'm uh, by the sidelines again. Uh, I don't know, I don't know how if I'm gonna be like a Button up or not, I'm thinking about heat stroke this time of year. So uh, I'm not I'm not 100 sure about that. But I'll, but I'll probably be back. You know, I, you know, I will be back. Yeah. Uh, but you know, and, um, overall, excited to uh, be back in the stadium. Oh, and have we confirmed? Um, are you on the field, or are we so topsy turvy? Uh, that's topsy turvy at the point. Okay. Um. Uh, but yeah. But yeah. this man might be on the field. 
Um, and yeah. Uh, but yeah, but I'm very excited for this game. Um, I think it'll be huge. If and I, I will say I know a day is a big attendance, and apparently we have you know a large following of Bama fans. But if you can't make next week, that's fine. That or if you can't make this week, that's fine. But guess what? Guess what? Guess what? It doesn't happen two weeks in a row. We have a game on yeah. April 20th. So that's the Defenders game. We'll talk to you all more about that next week. Um, but, yeah, but that's mm-hmm. another game I'm very excited for. But, hey, it's a 1-0 mentality. We've been like this since 2022. Uh, your favorite franchise has more losses than we do. So. <laughs> all, right. Yeah. all right. Real quick, Scout, where can people find you on social media? Yeah. Um, Thing I should have added this. Um, yeah, so at Southern Charm SP um, on Twitter and then Southern Charm Sports on Instagram and Real, if you're on that, add me. Um, and yeah, All so right. that's where you can find me. All right, and you can find me, uh, Buck, at Science UFM. You can see I've been posting my thoughts on stuff uh, in regards to, you know, the league uh, and again, the science. So you can find me right there, real quick. I post, try, I've tried to post at least a couple times a day. So just a couple thoughts right there. But until then, we'll see you next week.